and it will never happen. Chris what is Hanu the intention? Will, Chris Hanu will never die again. And we might have been rejected by voters, but what Chris Hanu stood for will always stand. We'll defend it, whatever it takes, in whatever moment. Even when we are trying to establish a government of national unity, we are paying a price for establishing that government. We are paying a price of being insulted, undermined, and bullied. But we are putting the interest of our country first. But uh, they need to bring everyone. It's very important. Mm. And I'm, I'm quite excited that we've done that. Literally every political party in that legislature, uh, we've negotiated, discussed with them. And that is why we felt that uh, it's unfortunate that the Democratic Alliance uh, they didn't want to be part of this executive, but they're still in the legislature. We're still going to extend their hand to have them to chair some of the committees um, uh, and, and ensure that we work together with everyone that is part of that institute. Just when you think politics in Gauteng couldn't get any more intense, we have Panyazali Sufi taking on the DA with some fiery words. Is it a political battle, a clash of ideologies, or something even deeper. Stay tuned, because today we are breaking down what really happening between the ANC's Panyaza Lisufi and the DA, and how their ideological differences could shape the future of Gauteng. Welcome back to Inkari. It's time. I'm Kondus. And if you caught yesterday's video, we dove deep into the five major political ideologies shaping South Africa. Well, today, those very ideologies are playing out in real life in Gauteng. We have a premier defending his leadership against an opposition that wants a different path for the province. Let's dig into it. Panyaz Ali Sufi, the premier of Gauteng, recently responded to what he described as a relentless campaign by the DA to unseat him. He believes that the DA is not just after his position as a premier, but is also trying to destabilize the entire provincial government. But this battle isn't just about political power. It's a clash of ideologies. Le Sufi claims that the DA refused to join the Houghton provincial government because they made demands that he couldn't accept. Instead, he accuses them of taking their grievances to the public, trying to portray him as a corrupt and irrational. But let's pause for a moment. What's really driving this conflict? Yesterday, we explored the different political ideologies, liberalism, socialism, conservatism, and nationalism. Here, we see some of those same ideas clashing head-on. The DA, with its liberal leanings, emphasizes free market policies, less state intervention, and individual freedoms. Meanwhile, the ANC, particularly under the Sufi's leadership, leans more towards a social democratic approach, prioritizing state involvement and upliftment programs aimed at addressing historical inequalities. Le Sufi's criticism of the DA isn't just about political posturing. It's about two very different visions for how thing. The DA wants to see a leaner government and a stronger role for the private sector, while the ANC believes that state-led initiatives are the key to uplifting marginalized communities. This ideological divide is why the DA's refusal to join the GPU wasn't just about demands, it was about fundamentally different philosophies of governance. And this different plays out on the ground too. Lesufi's focus is on using government resources to uplift communities, while the DA argues that the private sector can do a better job if government steps back. It's no wonder that their dispute gets so heated. Each side believes that the other is steering Houting in the wrong direction. And I think this, that, that, the question you're asking is an important one, but because part of the DA's condition was that things like this are not going to be swept under the carpet. 
right? If there were investigations, they will continue. And we will make sure that we, we pursue this to the last degree. Um, appointments are going to be made properly. Um, if the, there's a maladministration, we are going to be focusing, um, you know, sharply on those things. And that there is going to be a um, an issue of power sharing, but B, there's also going to be the, the issue of um, decision making mechanisms that are put in place to make sure that we don't become rubber stamps of, of, of the ANC wanting to continue doing things as they have been doing for the longest of time. So these are things that we had put on the on, on our on, on our list, if you like, of things that uh, you know were um, almost non-negotiables, right? To say things that have been investigated cannot be swept under the carpet. We'll continue to do that, and this is what I promise you. We would have still pursued that. So it's not because now we find ourselves on the outside that now all these cases, the issue of the etos was still one of those things that we were going to drive, and we're still going to drive. By the way, they think uh, are they now communicating that oh now this is a done deal? Uh, you know, there's money that we're now paying, and therefore let's all sing kumbaya. What they're not telling people is that money is actually taken from other departments right now. As I'm talking to you now, um, there is there, 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 there is actually now um, a cut in, in social development there's a cut in um in, in human settlement there's a cut in uh, in health that is money that is coming from there banyasa lied to the nation and said there is new money that is coming from you know uh, new streams that they would have um, that they, they said that they, they've identified but now there is no new stream there's no new money that is there they're cutting money from um, you know from the departments existing departments and this is some of those things that made us to then say if we're not going to be able to then agree that these will be addressed then we're not going to be part of this. when one million voters in Gauteng wanted to see the democratic alliance in that very government i mean is that something that you consider what do you say to the one million voters in Gauteng that wanted to see the da in that government and the da is accommodated uh, we, we didn't if we outrightly said we don't want the da at all costs i think your statement will hold water uh, we we, we defunded the province and we felt that those that crafted the statement of intent nationally must meet and guide us um, so we, we wanted uh, the team at National to assist us. And we went to National. Uh, both the national leadership of the DA came and the national leadership of the ANC came. Even at that level, uh, there was a deadlock. Um, and it's a deadlock on something that was very unfortunate, just to say uh, that the DA feels that what was given to them uh, was not uh, good enough, whereas it's something that they presented to us. Uh, I was elected a premier on the basis of a document that was produced by the DA to say hey, we want you to be a premier, we want you to be a deputy speaker, and we we'll also want somebody from the NC to be a speaker on condition to give us three MEC positions and then we will uh, provide seven positions for the ANC and other political parties. Mm. And that's exactly what we did. Um, the only problem became after they've presented that document to us and after we have elected the premier, the speaker and the deputy speaker, they came to say they're withdrawing the document. Uh, and that created, obviously, uh, the situation that we're in. But uh, we've crossed the river. Our view is that the door is not closed. Uh, because we've got a special relationship uh, with the D8 national level. Uh, we really believe that we will continue to have those particular discussions. But we can't hold government at ransom. We can't have government not functioning. We can't have people at hospitals not getting medication. We can't have doctors not being paid. We can't have teachers not being paid. Because that's where it was going. Uh, and that was going to be catastrophic. So we've established government with political parties that have signed the government of national unity. Uh, with Patriotic Alliance, uh, the IFP, Rise and Zanz and DA. Uh, they still have a speaker, a deputy speaker in the, in the legislature. There's no intention to remove her. Uh, if the DA remove her, that would be unfortunate. So that everyone uh, should be part of this government. Well, we spoke to Solim Simanga this morning and you talk about um, the deputy speaker. This is what he had to say. Yeah. Listen to this. And therefore, the positions that we were seeking to get into were supposed to be complementary to each other. Therefore, there's no way that we will then allow a situation where we continue to have a deputy speaker that is not, um, you know, going to have meaningful contributions. We were pairing that with a chair of chess that was coming in with the other uh, portfolios that we were going to get in terms of uh, the oversight committees that would have been there. Therefore, um, there's no need for us to then continue having the deputy speaker, um, you know, if we're not going to then follow it up with all the other things that we said we wanted to then introduce in that particular space. So, um, Refila is not going to continue to be the, the, the deputy speaker in Kaute.
because that this doesn't talk to what we were aiming to then achieve in this government. That's unfortunate, uh, deeply regrettable, I must be honest. Uh, as I said, we didn't want to close the door, and we're not going to close that door. Uh, we'll persuade, persuade, persuade. We have postponed the announcement twice because we valued the need to negotiate and persuade each other. So we will continue to persuade the Democratic Alliance, uh, but if they feel the way they feel, um, we, we, we'll take it from there. But uh, where we are, we really believe that everyone must be part. And we are, we are, we are relieved that even those political parties that have not signed government of national unity, they've demonstrated the commitment to work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, there are parties that said, we don't want to be in the executive, but uh, we'll chair committees and we'll support uh, uh, the government of national unity or the government of provincial unity. So we've got um, a good representative of political parties to, 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 to really continue. And this is unfortunate. Uh, that the Democratic Alliance feel that uh, they will withdraw their representative in that government. Was is Panyazal a Sufi crying out for help? Or is he standing firm against opposition pressure? It depends on how you look at it. From one angle, he is defending his position and his ideology against a party that wants a very different direction for Gauteng. From another, he is up against a tough opposition that is determined to win over the province voters. One thing is for sure, this ideological battle between the ANC and the DA will shape the future of Gauteng and by extension influence national politics. And if the past few weeks are any indication, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Not necessarily. I mean, that's a scaremongering activity. Um, we have spoken to all political parties and I'm emphasizing that point. Um, I mean, it will... <laughs> It will be naive out of us to think that we can establish government when we don't have something beyond 50%. Uh, we have spoken to literally every organization. Action SA, Freedom Front, MK, EFF, ACDP, um, PA. So all the political parties. Only one political party that does not want to be part of this government, uh, which is the DA. All other political parties also on the basis that have not entered into an agreement with them at national level. But they've demonstrated their willingness to work with us. Uh, our national leadership met with the EFF. We met with the EFF in the province, and EFF produced a letter that they've stated their requirements. Uh, our national leadership met with MK. We met with MK in the province, and they've stated their commitment on how they want to be part of this government. So any other person that wants to declare ourselves either as illegitimate or a minority government, they don't understand the arrangements that we've put. Uh, they are transparent, open, each and every political party said we are part of this but obviously we have to manage the dynamics that we find ourselves in politically so it's only one party that have withdrawn called the democratic alliance and if we draw the democratic alliance we've got almost 78 uh, percent uh, of, of voters that have voted in our province uh, that will be engaged on an item to item basis for example bossa said we don't want a formal arrangement with you as the anc uh, but it depends on the item on the floor. Uh, if there's an item that we feel will support, we'll support you. But if there's an item that we feel will not support you, we'll not support you. You go to Action SA. They say, we want a position of being an independent opposition, mm -hmm. but we don't want to work with the DA. The DA has stamped us at <laughs> a, a, a moonshot. They left without inviting us. They left without telling us. They have their own grudges with the DA. But they say, give us a position uh, of a committee, uh, the Public Accounts Committee. Give us a committee to chair that. And on the basis of us chairing that particular committee, we will be in a position to determine how we support you. So there is a broad support across uh, political parties, only one party. And that particular party is the DA. And oh. we will not, we'll not um, rest until we have persuaded uh, the Democratic Party to be part of this institution. Let it be them as they're doing now. When they're rejecting position, they don't want to be part of this thing. But where we stand, we have a government that can run for the next five years. But you go to negotiations and have other political parties that their mission is to kill the ANC. Their mission is to eliminate the ANC. The voters might have said what they've said. But to kill the ANC will never happen. So you believe as long that as we level. still stand, as long as some of us still breathe, as long as some of us still st are still members of the African National Congress, Chris Anu will never die again. Premier, do you believe then that from a national level the ANC has betrayed the liberation? Surely not. They've taken 
a stand that South Africans don't appreciate. A stand where we would have been in the opposition benches and allow all these other political parties to run this country. Imagine those political parties without the ANC. But we said, even if voters rejected us, we'll stand for what Chris Hunt stood for. Even if voters have thrown us in the lion's den with some of this organization that hate transformation, some of this organization that still glorify an apartheid flag, some of the organization that still wants Orani and other institutions, we said for the sake of our citizens, for the sake of the poor, for the sake of the weaknesses, we'll dust ourselves and try to form a government of national unity. Regardless of that, we have been bullied, we have been insulted by political parties that have no credence whatever to build a non-racial transformative society. And you. if they think they can kill Chris Hane again, we are the last line to defend that and it will never happen. Let me ask you this. We spoke to Solim Simanga earlier, and I want to give you a right of reply to some of the things that he said, right? Because I think that's only honorable. Um, he said that your idea of having a Department of Environment in Gauteng is a joke. He used those words, uh, saying that uh, it's a joke to have this idea of a department that focuses on the cleanup of the province. What do you say to that? Before a business is established in this country, there must be environmental impact studies. They've been delayed. And how many environmental impact studies that needed to establish jobs? Uh, could not go through. Go to each and every informal settlement. It's dirty. Go to the middle of any CBD in our province. It's dirty. And this mandate runs with municipalities, but they've not executed. Our province, it's dirty, smelly, stinking. And if to clean it up is a joke, I don't know. Uh, I honestly don't know. But besides, we are living in a world of climate change. The climate has changed. We need to warn our citizens if there will be a storm. We need to warn our citizens if there will be a disaster. We need to warn our citizens and we need to have the technology to warn people if something big is going to happen in our province. We need to link up with the National Department of Environment. We can't, we can't just leave that important aspect to chance. Uh, so if they don't see the importance of it, we see there are many businesses that would have been established. There are many infrastructure that would have been established but something called an environment impact study has delayed it, mm. and people are unemployed. So we want to fast track and unlock that. And if they see that as a joke, it's unfortunate. Tell but me about I can't ego. tolerate the depart. You go to townships, you can't tolerate dirtiness. You know, it's so dirty. You go to some of our important parks, so dirty. Our rivers, unattended. You go to the Val Dam now. There's something that is destroying that Val Dam. Mm. similar that destroyed the RTPS dam. Mm. We need to prepare for those things. You can't just fold your arms and say something will be automatic and these things will go. Let me you ask need you a leader that can champion those changes. I want to look at these departments. EGov, what do you want to do with that? EGov is to modernize government. Wi-Fi and um, uh, data is a new water and electricity. Uh, and people don't have to queue at our services. Uh, education, for example, we have to modernize it. Our hospitals, you can't have somebody going to a hospital and be told there are no beds. When technology can allow, before you take your mother or your parent to a hospital, you can see whether that hospital has a bed or not. Mm. That's the kind of technology we need. Also to fight crime. We are putting CCTVs, we are putting all these particular things. So eGov is a very, very important gov uh, government department that ensures that we are not hacked. <laughs> Uh, we can protect our ICT system, and then we can modernize uh, filing. I mean, how many people go to hospital, your file is missing? Yeah. When we can modernize that? How many people go to queue for medication? When we can modernize and that? And modernize it, we should. Remain, um, you know, available to engage and to make sure that, uh, you know, the voters' um, uh, uh, wishes are in counting is actually then respected. And that is of a government that shares power, um, you know, or political parties that share power in government and not just, um, you know, other political parties coming in and becoming uh, vote voters, um, you know, for um, the governing party. And I think yesterday was actually a testament of um, exactly what we were scared would happen. Um, that, you know, the ANC would want to then continue as they have been um, controlling, um, in this instance, 98% of the budgets, 98% of the service delivery uh, departments, and actually then meaning that all that uh, they've given to other political parties is just going to be scraps of uh, things that are not going to even have any kind of, um, you know, impact in terms of uh, changing the lives of the people of Hauden. It's unfortunate the statement that they are telling that wanted to take everything. We didn't. 
We responded to a document that they said they need three MECs. We have given them three MECs. We responded to a document that they want TPT speaker. We have given them TPT speaker. We responded to a document that they, they wanted to chair six committees. We are ready even today to give them six committees. The reason we have seven MECs of the ANC is that the political parties that have signed government of provincial units is three. It's not because we are selfish. Uh, we want seven MECs. The political parties that are in that legislature that have signed the government of provincial unity, that three. If there were four, we'll give them the four position. Actually, there is the Freedom Front that they've signed, but they said, we don't have a team or a person that is capable to be an MEC. Mm. We'll prefer to have two committees that we have chaired. We're going to give them those two committees, uh, 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 the Freedom Front. So it's not that we wanted everything for ourselves. We understand we didn't win elections. We understand we are the party that was preferred by uh, 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 more people in Gauti, but we need to bring everyone, be inclusive, and deal with this thing. So it's encouraging now that the Democratic Alliance says, we have not closed the door. I've said it yesterday, we have not closed the door. We will engage until we find each other. They might not be in the executive, there are many other roles that they can play, but we will want to ensure that we have government that can function, can protect the weak, mm -hmm. and render services. But the government that can fight crime, I must be honest, if there's something that uh, 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 troubles me. Is the level of crime enough? Thanks for tuning in to Inkari. It's time. What do you think? Are these ideological differences too great to bridge? Or is there a path to unity for the sake of Houghton's future? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next breakdown of South Africa's political scene. Until next time, remember, in Kari, it's time to think critically and stay informed. Take care.